Is a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Second. Motion to second. Adopt the agenda. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Um, need approval of the August 22nd, 2013 minutes. Are any changes or additions or corrections need to know at this time? Move approval. Second. Motion to second. To approve the minutes of August 22, 2013. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Those minutes are now approved and are official. Um, Council members, any members in the audience? Okay. Items on deferral or withdrawal. There are several items on the agenda for deferral or withdrawal. Item 1, 2013Z 012TX 001, adjustments to the build to zone requirements. A request to amend the Metropolitan Zoning Code pertaining to an adjustment of build to zone requirements. Staff recommendation is to defer this item to the September 26th Planning Commission meeting. Item number 4, 2013S 0, or pardon me, 121 001. Kenner Manor Land or subdivision of lots 126 and 127. A request for final plat approval to create three lots on property located at 4006 Woodmont Boulevard, zoned R10. The staff recommendation is to defer this item to the September 26 Planning Commission meeting. Item 5A, 2013 CP 005 002, the East Nashville Plan Amendment, Porter Road. A request to amend the East Nashville Community Plan 2006 update by changing the land use policy from Neighborhood General to Neighborhood Center policy for a portion of properties located at 1505 and 1507 Porter Road. Staff recommendation is to defer to the September 26 Planning Commission meeting. Item 5B, 2013 SP-030-001, Porter Road. A request to rezone from single and two-family residential, R6, to specific plan mixed use. Zoning for the properties located at 1505 and 1507 Porter Road, and for a portion of properties located at 1516 and 1528C Riverside Drive, to permit up to 28 residential dwelling units and up to 6,000 square feet of commercial space. Staff recommendation is to defer the item to the September 26th Planning Commission meeting. Item number 8, 2013 SP-027-001, Tennessee Avenue Cottages. A request to rezone from CS and SPR zoning for properties located at 4900, 4902, 4904, and 4906 Tennessee Avenue to permit up to nine residential dwelling units. Staff recommendation is to defer the item to the September 26th Planning Commission meeting. Item number 11, 2013Z 031PR 001. This is a request to rezone from R10 to IWD zoning for properties located at McGavick Pike Unnumbered, approximately 1,850 feet north of Harding Place, and partially located within the Flood Plain Overlay District, requested by Hawkins Development Company. Uh, staff recommendation is to approve. This was not on your um, deferral agenda, but it's been added to your deferral agenda. And just, finally, just to clarify, you said to approve staff recommendation was to defer oh, to, to October defer 3rd. To October 10th. And then finally, item number 12. Um, 2013 S-112-001, Young Woods Resubdivision of Lot 6, the concept plan. A request for concept plan approval to create two lots on property located at 3304 Hobbs Road, zoned R20. Staff recommendation is to defer this item to the September 26 Planning Commission meeting. So to summarize, it's items 1, 4, 5A, 5B, 8, 11, and 12 that are on the deferral agenda. Okay. You've heard the uh, items that have been requested to be on deferral. There's a motion to accept those. So moved. Second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Items on consent. 
As information for our audience, if you are not satisfied with the decision made by the Planning Commission today, you may appeal the decision by petitioning for a writ of cert with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of entry of the Planning Commission's decision. To ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met, please be advised that you should contact independent legal counsel. The items on the consent agenda will be voted on at a single time. No individual public hearing will be held, nor will the commission debate these items unless a member of the audience or the commission requests that the item be removed from the consent agenda. Items on the consent agenda today. Um, item number two, 2013 SP-028-001, Lock Haven SP. A request to rezone from R40 to SPR zoning for property located at 6015 Cloverland Drive and a portion of property located at 6021 Cloverland Drive to permit up to 25 detached single family residential dwelling units. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions, including a variance to the subdivision regulations for frontage along an arterial road. Item number three. 2012 S-0-1, pardon me, 2012 S-130-001, Knowlton. A request for final plat approval to create five lots on property located at 3400 Leland Lane, zoned R10. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions. Item number six, 2009 SP-004-001, Horrell Properties. The four-year review of the Horrell Property SP to determine its completeness for property located at 809 Fifth Avenue South, approved for wrecker service, auto repair, and all other uses permitted in the CF Zoning District. Staff recommendation is to find the SP District active. Item number seven, 2009 SP-011-001, Blevins Road. The four-year review of the Blevins Road SP to determine its completeness for properties located at 3146 Old Hickory Boulevard and 3108 Blevins Road. Approved for, for automobile sales, used, automobile repair, vehic vehicular sales and services, heavy equipment repair, wrecker services, and outdoor storage. Subject to the standards and regulations. Thank you. Subject to the standards and regulations of requirements of the IWD Zoning District. Staff recommendation is to find the SP District complete. Item number nine, 2013 SP-031-001, the U.S. Bank at 4601 Gallatin Pike. A request to rezone from SP mixed use to SP mixed use and for final site plan approval for property located at 4601 Gallatin Pike to permit a 3,200 square foot bank and all other uses and standards of the MULA district in the case of redevelopment of the site. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions. Item number 10 is going to be taken off of the consent agenda. And finally, item number 13 has also been taken off of the consent agenda. So to summarize, the items on consent agenda are item number two, three, six, seven, and nine. Okay, you've heard the items been requested to be on consent. Is there a motion? Motion, motion second. To accept these items on consent, all in favor? Any opposed? Those are now approved. Uh, the two items that will be on the public hearing today are item 10 and item 13.
Sorry about that. That's all right. Item 10 is a request to rezone property located at 1004 Omahandra Place and 905 Visco Drive. It's approximately 6.83 acres. The request is rezoned from industrial restrictive to industrial general. Staff is recommending approval. This is only the Existing zoning, again, is industrial restrictive, and it's also within the floodplain overlay district, which is associated with Browns Creek, which runs along the western property line. This is also very close to uh, the Cumberland River, which is just uh, across to the north. The policy on this property is natural conservation and industrial. Uh, the natural conservation is, uh, again, along the area that's associated with Browns Creek, uh, which uh, was the floodplain for that. The industrial policy supports all types of industrial uses and is also consistent with the area's um, industrial nature. Uh, again, Browns Creek um, runs through this property and uh, stormwater requires buffers along uh, Browns Creek, which would be along the areas that's natural conservation. Inclusion staff is recommending approval because this request is consistent with the industrial policy and the uh, natural conservation area would be preserved in accordance with stormwater regulations for the uh, buffer yards. This okay. item is open for public hearing. The applicant will be allowed 10 minutes. If you'd like to, you can retain two minutes of that for rebuttal. Mr. Chairman, Tom White, I represent the applicant. I want to clarify one thing at the front end. We hadn't heard anything about this matter until we came in here today and were told it was bumped off consent. I inquired as to uh, who or what, and I've just spoken with that individual. He marked the wrong one. Uh, he has no objection to this matter. Uh, and so uh, I can do a presentation, but the gentleman's here uh, and will clarify that he took the wrong number. You got a sheet there of request to speak. Yeah, he requested to speak, but I, I, were you looking at the one on Mill Creek? Yes, sir. Okay, all right. So you don't object to this? What's the gentleman's name? Hobson. Hobson. Make sure it's who that is. Yeah, he's the one that gave it. That's all that. Yeah. Okay. No objection then. Um, a motion to approve. Is there a motion to um, put this back on consent? Well, just to approve it. To approve it? Okay. Oh, you need to close the public hearing. Yeah. Okay. Well, I want to get a motion forward to close the public hearing. Is there a motion to second it? To approve this. Okay. There needs to be a motion to close the public hearing and then a motion for approval if that's the desire of the board. We close the public hearing and we don't, uh, we know we're back up if the commission doesn't, doesn't want to approve it. Okay, there's a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Sorry. Motion to second close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Is there a motion to approve? Second. Motion second to approve. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 10 has now been approved. Thank you. Item 13. And just to let the public know, that item 11, the other, the one that was here, we got deferred till October 10th. Council, I'd, legal counsel, I'd, I'm just concerned that we closed the public hearing and then we didn't approve it. So I, I guess we, we could reopen it. Yes, but. Okay, the next case on the agenda is item number 13. This is the Bell Estate Development Plan. Uh, this property is located at the corner of Woodmont Boulevard and Estes Road. It's at the, the northeast corner of, of at Estes and Woodmont. Uh, this is the property outlined in red. It, it includes uh, two, two parcels of land today. This property uh, and staff is recommending approval with conditions of this request for a development plan. Uh, this is the property once again shown in gray. The property is zoned R20. And you, you may recall that uh, in February of this year there was a concept plan approved for this property that included five lots with one of those lots including a, a duplex. And Normally, during the subdivision process, it's a three-step process. The, the first step is a concept plan. Uh, the second step is the development plan, which this is, is before you today. And the third step is the final plat. 
And so the development plan is basically the construction plans where this is the point when the, the stormwater regulations have to be met. Um, if there's any if public infrastructure, that's what's being reviewed by all the reviewing agencies. And normally these are done at a staff level administratively, but when, when the commission approved this concept plan in February, uh, because of some of the, the stormwater issues that some of those comments that came up from the public, uh, the commission required that this development plan not be approved administratively and that it come back before the commission. So that, that is what's before you today. Um, this plan is essentially the, the same layout that was approved by the commission back in February with a few minor modifications. Um, it is not a cluster lot subdivision. It's just a regular subdivision. All of these lots meet the, the R20 zoning. They, they range in size from 21,000 square feet to approximately 33,000 square feet. And if you look, there, there's several areas that are designated as open space. There's, there's one back here. Um, part of that is in floodplain. And then there's another open space area up run along Estes Road. And so it does maintain the two access points that were required at the concept plan. One, one joint access easement is right here off of Estes, and the second is between lots three and four on Woodmont right here. So the existing house here would remain, and then there would be four new lots on top of that. So. Uh, since all of the reviewing agencies have recommended approval, staff is recommending approval with conditions of this proposal. Staff is open for public hearing. The applicant be allowed 10 minutes. The ap applicant is first. Are you the applicant? No. Yes. The, the applicant would be first. The applicant will be allowed 10 minutes. You can keep two back for rebuttal if you'd like. My name is Kevin Estes with Dewey Estes Engineering, 2925 Berry Hill Drive. Um, I really have nothing to add. We received approved plans from stormwater, from water and sewer. We are, the um, development plan has the same concept. The rain garden has been provided in the front. We have previous pavers as the joint access drive. We're preserving the wall. Really nothing's changed other than maybe minor tweaking of a lot being two foot deeper, two foot wider. So I, um, we agree with the conditions. I request approval. That's really all. Thank you. So you be allowed two minutes. Is there anyone else in the audience wishing to speak in support? Seeing none, is there anyone wishing to speak in opposition? You'd be allowed two minutes if you give us your name and address, please. Okay, I'm Robin Thompson. I live at 3419 Hampton Avenue. Uh, my mother's Lorraine Jones, and she bought this property uh, in 1996, and it is directly adjacent to this development. If you look, it's the brown roof uh, that's off Estes Road. And uh, she's owned that for a long time. She did not get the, the mail. She's 81 years old, and I have her power of attorney. I'm speaking on her behalf. Um, we are opposed to this development on three levels on th for three reasons. Uh, the first one is the water, and I know they've hired the storm uh, water experts, but we've owned this property a long time. And there's a lot of there's water um, that is, it's in the floodplain. The big house next door is in the floodway. So it gets a lot of water overflow. And our concern is, is that the development of these lots will uh, cause a problem with the water. Um, I know they've, they've studied it. Um, however, we've, li we've owned it a long time. We know how the water works. And there is a water issue there. That's, step, that's problem number one. Number two, when you come out of the house with the brown roof, our house, onto Estes Road, it is a very busy street. Um, with the schools, uh, MBA, Innsworth, lot, the traffic there is very dense. And you, you can practically take your life in your own hands coming out of that Estes Drive. And so if you add two, another driveway closer to the light, I think it's going to cause a huge pra uh, traffic jam there. I think it's going to be hard to get in and out, and I think it's going to cause more traffic issues. Thirdly, I think um, I'm a real estate agent for Worth Properties, and I think having this development will devalue the properties around it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else wishing to speak in uh, opposition? Seeing as a motion to close the public hearing. He wants to what, would the applicant like to have rebuttal time? <laughs> okay. I'm sorry about that. Is there a motion to close the public hearing? Second. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Um, Jeff? No comment. 
Derek? Nothing. Greg? No. Andre? Stuart? Yes, uh, the, these are um, hard to, for the public who come here for one issue because they live there to understand. So rather than us simply saying yes or no at the end, uh, I'd like for the staff to go over what our scope of review is at this point, just as a matter of everybody knowing what we're able to do at this point and not able to do. Okay. Um, like I said, this is the second step of a three-step process. There's a concept plan comes first. Uh, this is the development plan. This is more of a technical review to make sure that that what's being proposed meets all of the requirements from an engineering standpoint. That this is when the developer has submitted their plans to Metro Stormwater, Metro Public Works, NES um, planning, and all the different agencies. And, and it's, it's not really a point where we're deciding whether this five lot subdivision should happen or not because that, that happened with the concept plan and it was determined when the concept plan was approved that it did meet the zoning requirements for the number of lots and the, the layout of the lots and, and the size of the lots in, at this location. So it's really more of a technical review at this point and um, so we have distributed these plans to the reviewing agencies and they have all recommended approval of this. And I will say there is someone here from Metro Stormwater that can maybe address in more detail the, the engineering behind the, the, the approval of the stormwater plans. But. We have over the years occasionally had subdivision hearings where we found out from the public something that we just didn't know, uh, having to do with uh, old graveyards and um, uh, sinkholes. And we have reversed at this level with, with, when it arose to, rose to that kind of a level. I also know the skepticism that people have about stormwater because they see it um, being a problem even with great reports. Uh, and I also found out that we, I don't think we actually do a lot of stormwater review if it's just one more structure or if it's a single family being developed. But this is a group of, of um, buildings, group of residences. So I would like to request uh, that we hear briefly from stormwater about what they found and, and didn't find. That's okay. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Steve Mishu, Metro Stormwater. We, we are aware that this is an area that has a lot of drainage complaints, uh, sugar trees, uh, very flashy creek. Uh, this particular development, as Commissioner Clifton was saying, it wasn't reviewed as a single family. It was reviewed as a, a full-blown development. So the review that we do for, for this development would be the same that we would do for a, a Walmart, a Burkett Village, something to that nature. And, and like the engineer said, this particular project, they, they use fire retention areas and previous pavement to help you know, control some of the stormwater issues. So, yes, sir. I think in some instances we have, we have discovered that, contrary to what it would appear to be, that the requirements to, to get the subdivision approved and passed you guys re actually results in ameliorating what's there um, and not simply not making it worse. Do you have any opinions about whether that's the case here? Well, you know, traditional subdivisions, you know, a few years ago, you would probably end up with just a detention pond. And that detention pond would serve as both water quality and quantity. But now, with, with new volume fiber requirements that we have, um, you could utilize more green infrastructure like fire retention areas and pervious pavement. So um, the idea is to capture some of the runoff and let it to soak in the ground as opposed to putting it in a pond and discharge it right away. Um, so I think, I think the subdivision process has, has evolved for the stormwater requirements and this is, um, this is suitable to meet volume five requirements, which is strictly optional at this time. Um, but it would be mandatory in a couple of years. So this one would pass our optional requirements as of this time, which is more stringent. So, so they in, some, in some ways they've done more than required? Right, like I said, you know, the volume five at this time is strictly optional mm -hmm. and uh, it will involve more of a volume reduction. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
it's a it's almost like in a trial period. We want we want people to do it, so that way we could evaluate it, and, and if there's any you know tweaks that we need to do, we could accomplish that after uh, this trial period. So we, we know this regulation is going to be coming down uh, through the state. We know that EPA is pushing it down to the state, and we're having to do it in the future. So we went ahead and. Uh, we went ahead and started implementing it at this time as an optional feature. I hate to belabor it. This is my last question. But, but when you talk about trial period, I, I can just imagine what uh, people who own next door property are thinking about. <laughs> they're experimenting here. No, this but is it's not, not that kind of a trial. It's, this is, they're this doing is more than they have to do. Exactly. Which may mean that it's much less of a problem than, than unbuilt upon. Uh, today's requirements doesn't involve a volume reduction. It's just a flow reduction. So the new volume five also has a flow and a volume reduction mechanism in there. And the tweaks I'm referring to are just minor tweaks. Hunter, Phil, Walter. Okay. Need a motion. I did have one comment just to point out, just because there was so much public here before about the sidewalks that I noticed that it, they may make a contribution to the sidewalk fund in lieu of sidewalks here, they have, that's an allowed. And so just for the public's sake, or would we expect to see sidewalks here or we probably won't? I mean, that, that it, or it's do sort we know? of, <laughs> it is a condition of, of, it's optional at this point for the developer. They could pay into the, the in lieu fee or the fund, or they could uh, still choose to build the sidewalk. So that might be a better question for the applicant. I don't know exactly which choice they're going to, to make. The other thing, too, just the other key issue was preservation of the wall, and they have taken steps to do that. Right. Yeah, so are there, I'd like to ask a question, please. We, we do want to protect the wall, we know. I was just wondering if you have room to make sidewalks well, or if you were thinking of it. I appreciate you catching that. I was hoping that wouldn't be brought up today. But count, uh, Commissioner Clifton actually um, asked me if I was going to put sidewalks there, and I very emphatically said, yes, along with my estes, I have 14 feet, and I can put sidewalk there all day long, and I don't change that story. However, on Estes Road, I wasn't very good at measure. I didn't, I didn't even think about Estes Road, to be quite honest, and I only have about four and a half feet before the wall. And so we at, uh, well, um, Mr. Johnson, who's no longer with us, understand, said, let's put this in there because we don't want to tear that wall along Estes. So I said, let's put it in there. So we are talking to Public Works whether they want the sidewalk along Woodmont. Like I said, we can put it there on Woodmont along Estes. I couldn't without destroying the wall. And there's a lot of, right up there at the corner of Woodmont Estes, there's a lot of NES stuff. So really, Public Works is talking to NES and seeing whether they want it around all that. So. I'm not trying to dodge the question. No along Estes, maybe along Woodmont, depending on whether they want it there. Um, and I'm leaving that up to Public Works and NES to work that out. But I, I remembered you asked me that very specifically, and I want to make sure I responded honestly and thoroughly on that. So thank you. Good motion. Oops. With what? With conditions. With conditions. Okay. Motion second to approve with conditions. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right. <clears throat> Bill, anything from historic? I mean, from the parks? Uh, next meeting will be the uh, first uh, Tuesday in uh, October. And um, we did accept uh, one big piece of property to be added to our park system, which I'm most very pleased with. Uh, at our last meeting, and we had a, a very, <clears throat> very lively uh, meeting. Uh, the one item that I mentioned is still in uh, contention, I guess you'd say, and that's a cell tower in Warner Park. Uh, that's still uh, being discussed, I guess you'd say, at this point. That's it. Uh, historic Hunter? No report. Okay. Executive Committee report to Stuart. Yes, sir. I have one. The, the cell tower is so you can get your phone calls while you're hiking, is that? That's it. Okay. There is a dead area there, and um, it would be actually a tower shared by either five or six um, uh, phone companies. But, All right. Uh, there are I'm sorry. I just... People that you, I know more details than you wanted to know. Okay. 
We did actually have an executive committee report. Uh, Chairman McLean and Andre and I attended uh, on September 5th. We went over um, what we had set out as five issues at our, our retreat to uh, to address this coming in this coming year. Uh, those were encouraging redevelopment. Um, understanding and addressing the suburbanization of poverty, uh, meaning things like um, gentrification, housing choice, affordability. Uh, third was state legislation impacting growth, development, and preservation here in Nashville. Fourth was encouraging, engaging uh, Metro Planning Commissioners in Nashville Next, which some of you have done a much better job of than others of us. And fifth, uh, continuously improving the information provided by staff to commissioners. So we, we went over those five and agreed to use our upcoming work sessions, which we want, want to get back into the habit of doing, to address these, particularly one, two, and three, of encouraging, encouraging redevelopment, the suburbanization of poverty issue, and, and review of state legislation and its impacts on Metro. So we have we have proposed a work schedule for that. Um, in October we hope to discuss encouraging redevelopment. In December we're not having a work session, but January uh, update on proposed state legislation and then in, in March the discussion of suburbanization of poverty and larger issues such as gentrification. So that's what we did and we'll be um, meeting as a um, um, executive committee a little bit more regularly, I think. Thank you, sir. I'll anything you want to add to that. No, okay. Any questions? I do have a question. I, yeah. I noticed under item one, encouraging redevelopment, addressing parking issues in urban areas, seems like that might be a workshop all of its own, all, all on its own. I don't know if the staff is currently looking at that. I know it's been bubbling up in a number mm -hmm. of areas. And, well, okay. we talked about um, the work that ULI is doing and hoping to integrate some of that into, right. what, into our discussion. Great. So maybe we could learn from that and then do something at, the, at, at our level. Too. Great. Okay. Bill, you had added comment from... I, I have one public service announcement. I want to invite everybody to come to the, the Hermitage on October 5th and 6th. We're having a Fall Fest. First one is going to be huge. We're having 95 artists uh, showing their arts and wares and crafts uh, from 12 states. Uh, in addition to that, we'll have uh, food trucks. We'll have live entertainment all day Saturday and Sunday from 10 to 5. And um, there's a kids' area. And the feature item at this is going to be a stack box mosaic, which these are uh, up to 3, 000, almost 3,000 boxes that have been painted on both sides. It is entered in the Guinness World Book of Records uh, contest. And uh, we, as far as we know, have already qualified to, to win. And this is a project that's been in lots of different schools, at the airport, all, all different places. So come and see it. It's a wall made of these boxes, and it will be around the, the area. That's, it's right next to the mansion where we're going to have it. So thank you very much. There's a great house there, too. Yes, I believe it's next to some guy named Andrew Jackson lived in. Yes, thank you. Walter Zuni. Thing you want to tell us from the council that's going on? Well, you know, we are just realigning a lot of things in the council. You know, this is the end of the council year, and and uh, we'll be appointing different uh, positions. The IBD boards coming up, and just get in September. We will be actually meeting again on the seventeenth. We had two back-to-back -back meetings for the month of September. And then after September, we'll have everything in place. So we'll be ready to go again uh, the following month. So that's about it. We call it realignment. Rick? Yeah, just uh, welcoming uh, Councilman Hunt. Uh, the commission wanted to have a short agenda today for you. It's kind of a break-in period. So, uh, <laughs> and I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I you appreciate that, too. <laughs> just a, a couple of things. We After the last meeting, uh, we did re receive a request for rehearing the rezoning case at 5516 Kentucky Avenue. In accordance with the rules and procedures of the Planning Commission, the chairman and I have met, and we did not find that there was any new information that was not 
available at the uh, hearing, and therefore our recommendation is not to rehear that. Um, just for those, if anybody, uh, someone on the prevailing side, which would be uh, Commissioners Ponder, Dalton, G, uh, McLean, and Haynes, have the option if they wanted to bring it back, they could. But uh, we did not find that there was anything that warranted that. Um, just want to welcome Jason to April. Jason is right here. Jason is our new employee. Uh, we'll be making, we're, we're working up, and uh, Bob's going to give him all the hard cases next time, so we'll be starting to make presentations. But a uh, uh, recent graduate from the University of Texas at Arlington in city and regional planning, uh, and had, had internship with the city of Fort Worth, and also um, worked at the university as well in terms of that, and we're glad to have him on board. Um, Ben Muskelly in our office is actually heading up parking day for us. We uh, Parking day will be on next Friday, um, the 20th, and um, our office in, is doing a big display. Basically, parking day is the day when um, um, the urban gorillas take over downtown parking uh, on the street and, and show what can be done in lieu of a parking space. Uh, and they make they take each space or double spaces and and create a, uh, an environment that, that maybe you can come and sit or whatever. So uh, it's something that's sponsored across the country, and we're participating in that. Uh, there'll be 30 spaces that are affected downtown. This is, I guess, the second year that we've uh, that this has been done. Where are these located? There, it will be down. I think ours is on Broadway. Yeah. Probably between second and third, I think, or third, second, third, or third, fourth. They're all. Oh. Okay, fourth and fifth and north side. There we go. There will be a bunch all up and down Broadway, but there will also be some in front of Cummins Station as well this year, and one in Green Hills. One parking space in Green Hills is going to be transformed. Apparently. They're, they're transformed for the day in terms of what? This is the 20th. The, uh, right yes, the 20th. Next, a week from tomorrow. Oh, right. We should take a bus to this. Should take a bus. That's right. And we have plenty of. You can, you can park here. Bicycle. <laughs> um, a couple of things. Nashville Next, again, is, is we're, we're still out there. Just for the commission, I mentioned this, but over the last two weeks, we've had a number of activities, but we have been focusing in particular uh, in the high schools. We've been at Glencliff, uh, Hillsboro, and Whites Creek in the last two weeks working with students, um, going through the Be the Next Mayor process, and, um, and they've been very, very excited about the process in terms of participating in that, letting, getting their ideas and preferences in there. Over the next two weeks, we will be doing eight major presentations and just uh, will be Middle Tennessee Industrial Distributors Association, Discover Nashville Neighborhoods Day, Parking Day. I mentioned our parking will actually include a lot of Nashville Next information. Um, I'm not sure we're going to do any actual priority uh, questioning there, but we will be there. Uh, we're also involved with the Hispanic Family Festival on the 21st, Youth Health Fair, Taste of Madison, and the Wilson Group Real Estate Services. All of those are, are presentations that... Uh, uh, that we'll be doing. One thing that will be that is important um, and probably a, a critical. This is a community-wide process on Saturday, October 12th. It'll be the morning of that, and it'll be at the Bridge Building. And we're doing the uh, growth allocation uh, exercise. This is the exercise where we basically invite the community to come in. We invite y'all to come in. We're actually going to be meeting with council members individually on this same kind of thing. The purpose is to okay uh, over the next uh, 25 years, we're going to have 100,000 uh, new dwelling units, uh, or 100,000 yeah, new dwelling units, uh, 200,000 or so new people, and 300,000 new jobs, and where do you want them to go? And uh, so we've got the exercise is basically one where we have uh, scaled uh, chips in terms of t different kinds of development. There'll be some discussion on how much infill there is, and then where where do the rest of these go? And so I think it's going to be an exciting um, uh, opportunity to kind of actually face reality in terms of where that growth goes and and what some of the implications. That's going to we'll you'll get more information, but it's Saturday, October 12th at the Bridge Building. So. Um, which is a great place to have lots of events. This is easy, convenient, and a good space. And uh, 
This is uh, the new year for the council, but it's also the new year for uh, great opportunities for continuing education and training opportunities. We've just got that. So we'll be providing these, but a couple of the highlights that are, that are going to be out there this year include uh, planning, ethics, and law, um, fiscal impact tool as a decision support tool, administering zoning codes, using subdivision regulations in the 21st century, uh, Jane Jacobs' legacy in the new urbanism, introducing new density to the neighborhood, which is a hot one. And then the one that is always exciting at the end of the year is the planning law review. It, I know that you're, yeah, you're, you know, that one is one that is always exciting. Anyway, those those will be between now and June, and we'll, um, the first one actually is, I don't think tr transportation modeling is on here, but I'm not sure that that's actually, that's maybe transportation modeling. Okay. Anyway, we'll be getting you the information uh, as to when they are. They're all be held. They're all at the. Well, that's a good question. Historically, they've always been in the National Room, but the National Room may be taken over for offices. Did this book there? All right, all in the National Room, all at three o'clock, and all you receive uh, uh, credit. We are so also are going to be making sure that you're aware when we do have workshops a lot of these are qualify for your training and so we're going to try to make sure that you're aware of that and we might maintain those records including today's probably yeah yeah Rick, i have a question regarding yeah. that i i uh, was just audited by the state of tennessee for my continuing ed as an architect but um so i was going back to my records and um, when Ann was here, she did a great job near the end of the year getting us all the information, getting us the checklist, showing us everything that we you know, uh, might have participated in. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that that was going to continue. Yeah, as Jennifer's well. picked that up seamlessly. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank you. She's working on it. She'll, she'll remind us here real quick that we have to get those in and what, what has been qualified in the past and then fill in your forms accordingly. Any other comments or questions? Okay, we stand adjourned to 4 p.m. on September 26th.